Hey guys and welcome to my updated next solo guide for 2021. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Next is a boss with 200,000 life points at 1,001 combat level with 5 phases. But do not be mistaken as next is a big step up in terms of PVM difficulty from bosses like QBD or Godrush Dungeon 2. For that reason, if you don't want to struggle really hard, I highly recommend 90 plus combat stats, 95 plus prayer and curses unlocked, 96 plus herbler for overloads because next does drain your stats, 87 plus summoning for Nihil and perhaps some BUB familiars if you're struggling, and at least tier 80 ranged weapons and perhaps tier 80 armor. Tier 70 armor will do, but the higher the better. And apart from that, you really want to have a sharpshoot or reckless aura here to make your life easier. Here's a massive list of things that that can be useful for next solos including nightmare gauntlets and fleeting boots the gauntlets allow you to use snipe when walking and it gives it 25 percent more accuracy fleeting boots allow you to use rapid fire while moving which is amazing for next absolutely highly recommended to have for next adrenaline potions of course the power burst of vitality which can be used for ice prisons a defender or high tier shield pretty much a requirement for the ice phase a shadow night heal for extra accuracy the auras again an enhanced excalibur to save on some food the criminal bolt e a enchanted for any crossbow weapon you're using for extra damage the stone of jazz buff an illuminated book of law can be used here which is the armadal book and a reaper necklace or essence of finality amulet for extra accuracy and the essence of finality Amulet also allows you to store a dark bow spec, which is very good for Nex. Now, like I said, Nex is a difficult boss and it will not be a pushover, so the bare minimum is a tier 80 weapon, tier 70 armor, a sharpshooter aura, some criminal ruby bolts enchanted, an archer's ring, you know, just a basic setup. The more you go to the right, the better the setup will be. As you can see to the right of that, the setup has Nightmare Gauntlets and Fleeting Boots, which will help you a lot during next because you want to be walking around to avoid damage. I'll explain a little bit more about that later, of course. And honestly, if I'm being entirely honest, I know they're expensive, but you want to have 290 weapons here being Ascensions because... It just helps so much to have the extra accuracy. Now, if you have access to better equipment like Serenic, it is definitely worth investing in this or perhaps a Ring of Death as well, simply because you will be making it back at next. Serenic lasts super duper long and it's tier 90 power armor, aka DPS armor, which will give you extra damage and a higher defense, which will make your kills faster and easier. And you'll have it back in a few hours on average. As for your inventory, there are two examples on screen. Both of these have overloads in them. So if you're wondering what those potions are, those are overloads. And the potion to the right is a replenishment potion, which is a super restore and an adrenaline potion in one. Highly recommended to have because it just helps if you need to get some adrenaline real quick for some thresholds or even onslaught. Now as for those white looking bolts, these are Diamond Procumnal Bolts E which have a special effect and you'll be using these for phases 3, 4 and 5. You'll be using the Ruby Procumnal Bolts E for phases 1 and 2 and yes they are worth it, they will deal a lot of extra damage. As for the green things, those are green blubber jellyfish and they're used for eating without draining your adrenaline, allowing you to use thresholds easily and just eating during combat without worrying about draining your adrenaline. The purple things are vulnerability bombs. Now, I don't really recommend using these because they're quite expensive, but if you're learning, they can get you through the blood phase slightly easier because they will allow you to deal 10% more damage for one minute. The red potion is the power burst of vitality, which we'll be using for the ice phase. And the other things are Sardom and Brew Flasks and a Super Restore, which gives you Prayer and Ansa Excalibur some sharks, a shield, and magic note paper in case you get the bruise and restores drop, which you want to pick up and note because there's no way you'll be able to pick them all up. Now before you get into next, I highly recommend trying to get a kill with another person in a duo because you can then attune the portals in the PVM hub to teleport there every single time. However, if you're going to go there for the first time manually, you're going to have to teleport to Trollheim by using two lore runes and two fire runes going inside Godrush Dungeon 1, then entering the Zaros area, equipping your ceremonial robe set, which you should buy off the Grand Exchange so that you can skip the 40 kill count, using anticipation and stuff running through because you will get attacked, and then entering the door. And there is a bank inside, so you don't need to worry about bringing any stuff. The thing is though, before you can get inside, you're going to need a frozen key. This frozen key is assembled by getting four pieces at each of the different factions in Gold Rush Dungeon 1. So we'll need to kill Zamrak minions for a piece, Saradoman minions for a piece, Bandos minions for a piece and Armino minions for a piece and then assemble it and you can recharge it with an amount of charges. One is used every time you enter the door, 
or through the PVMR portal at Bob in Lumbridge. Now, if you want to completely remove the requirement of kill count and using ceremonial robes to get to next every single time, you can go to this NPC and talk to them, give them 10 million coins, your frozen key and a ceremonial robe set so that you no longer require this to enter the next bank room. As a note, you always want to be killing Nex inside a custom instance, which will cost you 800k every single time. It is a lot of money, but it is worth it because you'll make it back. There's a very good reason for this, and that's a respawn timer, and so that Nex doesn't prey against range. Nex has five different phases, being the Smoke, Shadow, Blood, Ice, and Zaral's phase. These phases are fairly simple, except the Blood and Ice phase, which are quite difficult. As you can see, you can see a brief description of every single phase and what prayer or deflect curse you want to be using. The next phase at Nex will always start after you hit Nex for the first time after killing the next minion. You start with the smoke phase, you bring her down to 160k life points, you kill the shadow phase minion you can see in the bottom left corner, attack her again, then you start the shadow phase, you bring her down to 120k life points, you kill the blood phase minion, then you start the blood phase, and so on. I guess you get the point, it's 40,000 life points, then kill the minion and continue. Next will always spawn in the middle of the room and if you do not have the persistent rage archaeology relic something you can do is build your adrenaline on the minion or store your adrenaline on the minion by using defensives, escape and so on when targeting the minion. Although I highly recommend using persistent rage because you can start off every single kill with 100% adrenaline without stalling it by using abilities. I'll start off by explaining the mechanics phase by phase and then proceed by showing you some full kills. The first phase is the smoke phase and you'll want to pray against magic in this phase. The attack rotation is as follows. Virus, 4 regular attacks, the no escape, 4 attacks, repeat. The phase ends at 160k life points once you kill the minion. For the smoke phase, what you want to do to avoid at least one of the mechanics for a while is use Anticipate at around 14 seconds on the timer. The reason you do this is to avoid Nex's drag attack which will damage you and take off your prayer. Basically throughout this phase, keep Anticipation and Freedom up to avoid being dragged until you attack the minion and finish the phase, otherwise this will happen. In this phase, after doing some damage, you want to avoid the plus section of the arena by moving Nex away from the starting position, because that attack you just saw right there will deal 5,000 typos damage if standing in the way. It's called the no escape attack which will happen 5 attacks after the virus. The virus attack is just a stat draining attack which you do not need to worry about if you're using overloads. If you aren't using overloads, sip your super restore to restore your stats. Next up, the shadow phase. The shadow phase is the only phase during next where you want to be praying ranged. You want to move around constantly during this phase by clicking and spamming your keybinds for your abilities. You do this to avoid next hitting you, which allows you to soul split if you'd like to because you're sprinting around, and to avoid the shadow trap mechanic, which will deal typers damage to you if you stand on it, and another one if you aren't using melee boots and a helmet to keep Nex from going into melee distance with you, you avoid this bleep mechanic, which is very painful. If you have this bleep mechanic, surge away, try to get away as fast as you can from Nex and finish the phase as fast as possible because it's really damaging to your health. Next up, the blood phase. This is without a doubt the hardest phase for anyone who's learning because there's a healing mechanic, which is extremely annoying. But do not worry, with this guide, it will become easy to understand. The point of this phase is to bring Nex from 120k to 80k life points. But there's a healing mechanic and Nex heals if you use any bleed type ability. So fragmentation shot, corruption shot. Don't use those abilities, put them far up your bar or use form manual to avoid accidentally using them. Now, as a high-level player with high-tier gear, you won't struggle that much with this phase. You can almost ignore all of the mechanics and simply out-DPS them and then move on to the next phase. But don't worry, I did this with a Royal Crossbow, no overloads, no curses, no Nihil, and so on. Just to show you that it's definitely possible without all of these items, although overloads and an eye and so on are still highly recommended to make it a lot easier. After killing the minion, Nex will start off by siphoning. In this period of time, you do not want to attack Nex because she will heal from any attack you do. What you want to do as a mid-level player trying out this boss is simply killing the Blood Reaver she spawns, even use your thresholds to kill them so that Nex cannot heal 
from those the next time she comes around and siphon summons. But there's another mechanic that heals Nex, and that is the Blood Sacrifice. Your character will turn red and Nex will yell, I demand a Blood Sacrifice. And all you need to do to avoid this mechanic and her healing from that attack is by using Surge, or escape, or just running away as fast as you can, and then still attacking Nex. Otherwise, she will heal, and then three attacks after that, she siphons again, so do not attack her, kill the Reavers, and keep going. This is the strategy if you cannot DPS her down in one or two phases. Yes, that took me like three or four attempts, and it is definitely possible, but it isn't very pleasant without those overloads, high tier gear, curses, accuracy aura, Nile, and so on. That's why I recommend having those items to make the blood phase easier. The next example is going to be the onslaught method where I'm still using the same gear, being a royal crossbow and armor duel, but I'm using overloads and curses here for the extra accuracy because otherwise the onslaught method won't really work that well that often. For the onslaught method you want to make sure you have 100% adrenaline when going into the blood phase for the onslaught ability which is a lot from a mazcap ability codex. Now the way it works is you charge up snipe when Nex is spreading her wings, then let it loose, use onslaught and just stay there. Commit to it until you get to around 2,000 life points, quickly eat up. Make sure you're praying magic, of course, before you do this. Now, you see me escape here. I really didn't need to. Even if Nex healed from the blood sacrifice, I could have easily stood there and taken Nex down to 80,000 life points, but I chose to escape, use some abilities, and finish the phase that way. Once she hits 80,000 life points, she will no longer be able to heal up and beyond, and you can simply kill the minion and get ready for the ice phase. In the ice phase, you want to equip your diamond brick criminal bolts for the extra damage. You no longer need the ruby ones. Now, as for the attack rotation, the first special of the ice phase will be different depending on if you ended on a siphon or on a blood sacrifice in the blood phase. I would say just look if the phase ends on a siphon because you'll get an ice prison straight away, and the contained special attack really isn't that hard to avoid, but the ice prison can catch you off guard. The Ice Prison attack is a special attack that will deal typeless damage, stun you and take off your prayer, and the hit after the attack will usually KO you if you're unlucky. You can counter this attack by using Anticipation of Freedom, not being stunned, eating up to full, equipping your shield and using the Resonance ability, both of which I recommend keybinding next to each other. For example, Q and W, 1 and 2, F1 and F2, so that you can easily press them and activate them without worrying about looking where the ability is. Alternatively, you can use a power burst of vitality to counter the ice prison and stun by doubling your health for a period of time. This potion is that red potion that I showed you in the preset and gear setup, which is an excellent panic potion if freedom isn't off cooldown and you didn't use anticipate in time, you can use this potion, double your health, therefore halving the damage and survive the hit. Just be sure to put your magic prayer on right after this as well, because otherwise you still might get KO'd. Here's a clip of me showing you an ice prison counter without the power burst of vitality because it's on cooldown. As you can see, the ice prison comes in, I'm going to get stunned, my prey gets knocked off, I use freedom, quickly equip my shield, press my keybind, and resonance. Boom. I could have easily died there, guys, if it wasn't for my keybound food and defensive ability being resonance. The other special attack from the ice phase is contain this where she will walk towards you and try to knock off your prayer with icicles. If you do get hit by these and she does get close to you, you'll take some damage and your prayer will be knocked off so you quickly need to eat up and turn your prayer back on. If you just avoid Nex and stay out of melee distance, you should be fine. The final phase before you take down Nex is the Zaros phase and this is just simply attacks where she switches prayers being either melee, soul split and so on. If she prays melee, you can't deal damage to her with melee. If she uses soul split, she will heal from every attack she does to you that is successful. All you really need to do for this phase is run around like an absolute mad lad and keep dealing damage by utilizing bleeds or rapid fire abilities like rapid fire, fragmentation shot, dead shot and so on. We will now be taking a look at a full uncut kill where I explain what I'm doing. Now this won't be the absolute perfect kill but it is a kill that shows you pretty much everything we just covered. The reason I'm going to be using my own next setup is so that the kill isn't too long for the video where it's like 5 minutes because that's what your kill times will be if you do not have overloads and you're using a royal crossbow. 
Alright, so at around 14 seconds, I anticipate and throw my Vorm Bomb. Now, I'll be using the rotation you can see on screen. If you do not have an essence of finality, you want to use the upper rotation. Your goal is to get next down to 160k life points as fast as you can. Now, obviously, with a lower tier gear setup, which I experienced myself, you won't get her down in one rotation, especially if you don't have overloads. Now, if you do not have Greater Ricochet, which you probably don't if you're watching this guide and you don't have the Chroming 4 perk, you'll probably want to use both of your bleeds on the main and then use rapid fire if it is available to get the minion down and next into the next phase being the shadow phase. If you want to spend some money, you can also use Hydrix Bolts, which I'm using in this particular example, to get some adrenaline when killing the minion. Once I hit next again, she will hop over to the Shadow Phase, I put on Soul Split, and I spam my ability bar to start getting into the phase as quickly as possible. I start running around while hitting her because I want to keep my distance because I do not want that bleed. I also don't want to walk on the Shadow Traps. Now, you want to keep moving around, but if you see Nex around 123k life points, you want to start moving back to the minion while still hitting Nex. Now, this minion is very important, perhaps the most important main of the fight and you want to try and get up to 100% adrenaline for the blood phase. Now regardless of which rotation you're taking or what method you're using to get next down, you want to have high adrenaline so focus on that, try and build on the minion and build on next perhaps with defensive abilities before you start attacking next. If you're using a low tier weapon and you don't have overloads, focus on killing those blood reavers so that you eliminate one of next's healing methods. It is simply the only way you'll get through the blood phase because your DPS is simply too low to focus on Nex straight away. If you have overloads and you have decent weapons, you'll be able to onslaught the entire phase with some luck. If you're unlucky though, use a few basics and use snapshot to finish off the phase, but be sure to surge away and keep your distance during the blood sacrifice. Now you want to charge up Snipe when Nex spreads her wings, as you can see here, and it hits her just as she stops siphoning so that she won't heal from the attack. In this example, I'm using the Essence of Finality, I'm using hard to weapons and stuff, so I have no issues DPSing for the Blood Phase, and I really don't need to worry about using Onslaught. Onto the next minion, I swap my bolts. If you're using Diamond Bolts and Ruby Bolts, you want to switch to your Diamond Bolts at this point, because you'll no longer need the Ruby Criminal Bolts for the final phases. And you get into the Ice Phase after killing the next minion. Now, keep in mind that if you end on a Siphon, you will actually start with an Ice Prison, so be aware of that. Be prepared, know how to counter them. And all you really need to do in the ice phase is deal damage, keep your distance when Nex has contained this, and be prepared for those ice prisons. Now that we're in the final phase, being the Zaros phase, try and run around to save on food, especially if you're learning this will be an easy phase and you'll barely use any food. Just keep your magic pair up, run away from Nex, keep using your bleeds, rapid fire and deadshot, and you should be good. Now you might see me use a threshold here and there, and that's just because of muscle memory, but really, focus on your basics, only use Snapshot and Rapid Fire, and Deadshot. Now, you do actually see me using Deadshot at the end, which uh, isn't the best, but hey, here we are, kill finished, bada beam, bada boom. Now, I know that's a high-level kill using high-level gear, greater ricochet, and all the kinds of stuff, except for an Elder Crossbow, but it is definitely possible to get kills with lower tier gear. I've done it with and without overloads and curses. And you'll get anywhere from 4.30 to 7 minute kills. 7 minutes if you aren't using overloads and curses. It's, it's not very pleasant, I'll be honest with you guys. I would highly suggest having overloads before even attempting next, because it's just going to make your life so much easier. With that being said, we have come to the end of this guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please leave a like down below, and maybe consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.